Good afternoon everybody, Dean here from uh, Back to Nature. I said I'd do a video um, today, the sun's shining, the birds are singing, uh, even though we're across the border in Wales. Uh, it's lovely, it's lovely. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to get the Land Rover out and um, take you guys for a little bit of a tour around the Land Rover. Um, so uh, yeah, okay, it's a Land Rover Defender as I've mentioned in, pre in another video, in a previous video. Um, it's only a 90, it's not a 110, it's a 90. Um, I've had it since pretty much new, 2,000 miles on the clock. But I've done an awful lot of work to it. So if I just give you a bit of a, a brief rundown on it. Um, as you can see there, a lot of people use this. That's the old Coleman, um, double burner Coleman petrol. It's, uh, in my opinion, it's bulletproof. A very, very good bit of kit. It's never let me down. We've taken it to the Alps and all over the place. Um, sometimes not the prettiest, admittedly, but a but, uh, great bit of kit all the same. Um, as you can see from the Land Rover itself, or the back, I've had the seats removed. So there was obviously uh, two seats and two seats with all seat belts and gear. I had that removed, or should I say I removed it all myself. Everything you see here, I did myself on the Land Rover. Um, we've fitted in checker plate um, and a roller drawer, which I'll open in a second. You've got checker plate in there. That's four mil checker plate aluminium just to keep the weight down. Um, I've made a shelf there as well. So if I go from right to left, you'll see in the back here, the old trusty uh, fridge. This is an Engel fridge. This is a 4550, I think it is, um, 45 litre. Uh, it is a fridge stroke freezer, but obviously because of the size of it and the nature of it, you can only have freeze or fridge. But I mean, that said, it, it's, a, it's a, made a fantastic difference to any trip out. Uh, you can go away for sort of five or six days, really not worry about, you know, take fresh food with you. You've got, you know, everything from a, uh, you know, a bottle of wine to, to bacon, eggs, everything else. It's all lovely and fresh. So that makes a huge difference and it's really come into its own in the Alps and, and other places that we've taken it. Um, from there, obviously going left, you can see there's a shelf system here that I've set up underneath there that's stored and obviously I, I measured all this out when I was building it um, with all this in mind so obviously it's a very very snug fit because obviously there's not a lot of room um, you've got a uh, frontier stove here a lot of people use the frontier stove um, there's a couple of stoves on the market uh, I love it I absolutely love it uh, nice easy put together three legs great I use it in the uh, in the jet tent I use it Vivian sometimes Again, never let me down. As long as you maintain it, which I've done this morning, rub it down and oil it. Um, never let me down. Been a really good bit of kit. Really good, you know, good bit of kit. And it gives out a lot of heat, to be fair. So that's that one. Um, to the left there, I've got a wolf box. A lot of this kit I bought from uh, Andrea up at Neen Overland um, in Peterborough area. Um, and indeed, the Land Rover was on the stand a couple of times, this Land Rover at um, uh, the Land Rover Billing Show. But, um, so I've got a wolf box there, and inside the wolf box we've got kitchen bits and pieces. I'm not going to bore everybody with that. There's frying pans, cuts, you know, uh, forks, knives, fork, all that sort of stuff. Um, a few spices and that sort of stuff. Um, above that, on the shelf, this was designed obviously um, because I want to be able to get everything out in each area without moving kit. You know, you stop, you want to get something out. There's nothing worse than moving kit just to get at something else. I mean, it's it's a nightmare. So the shelf was uh, built. It's obviously bent there. It's obviously, you know, and all fixed in. Um, I've got, this is the skirt for the um, South African Hannibal tent on the roof there. This skirt, it's, uh, it's the jumbo skirt and it basically comes out around and it's a full curtain with a door. That allows, you know, cooking in here in the winter or whatever. You peg it down to the ground, you cook in. It's a lovely little area and the ladder comes up into the tent. I will open it up at another time. Um, and show you in a different setup because it's got a couple of configurations. Uh, the kit we got here, like I say, a couple of configurations that you can use depending on weather, depending on wind, um, and how many of you are actually uh, camping. But there's the skirt for that. There's the old dry bag in there. I've got um, my North Face sleeping bag as I was out only recently um, with Sandy actually. So I've got my kit in that one. Um, I've got a, a T Max compressor on the other side there. Obviously, for, for blowing out, should I need it, or, or tyres, inflation, um, that sort of stuff, can't, can't be without that. If I then come to the front, this one here, um, this one here, I've got my uh, recovery gear and everything else, but top to bottom, 
Uh, I've got a stack and store system in here, which is obviously pinned in so it can't move. In this one, um, just standard sort of rations, as you can see there. Standard rations, what have we got there? We've got, um, let's have a look. We've got uh, your standard Lancashire hot pot, your beef, your all day breakfast, and like meatballs and pasta. There's about 10 or 10 or 12 in there. What's nice about that is, they're, obviously they've got a, a long shelf life. They're in there. And what I like about this Land Rover and the way that I've got it is a Friday night, I come home from work or whatever I'm doing at any time during the week. If I want a quick night away or if I want to disappear somewhere, it's totally self-sufficient. There's fuel for the cookers, there's food, there's water. I'll show you the water system in a second. There's a fridge, I can just go. I've got spare change of clothes here. I've got washing facility. We've got a solar shower system. It's just go, literally grab the keys and go. So that's that one at the top. Um, in this top stack and store box I've got here, let's grab this one. Again, like I was talking about, I've got um, your expedition towels. Uh, I've got your washing gear there. We've got a, a solar shower at the back. This coiled pipe here is a 25 mil diameter pipe and it goes with this compressor. Um, which is purely set up to uh, work with the inflatable, that's the Zodiac inflatable 3.4 that you see in other videos, but I'll talk about that on another one. Um, again, good bit of kit. I don't know if any of you guys have tried inflating a, an air mattress well, <laughs> by hand or by foot pump. Well, this is a Zodiac inflatable and uh, it's, it's a no-go, so compressor is actually a valuable bit of kit. But uh, underneath there, um, this one here at the back, the, the lowest sack in store, um, I've basically got a uh, kit for the Land Rover. So I've got um, screen wash and a like, a full, full setup of fuses, um, you know, um, a bulb setup. That's a, that's a waterproof container with bulbs. There's every bulb in there from the roof lights to indicators, everything. You can't have enough. Um, I got straps, uh, utility straps in this blue bag here for when I put my open boat on the roof or anything like that. That's great. Good bit of kit. And then underneath you can see the shackle basically and straps for the winch, that's winching kit. So what's nice, again I pack this kit, I know where the kit is, at the drop of a hat. Um, I could just access it because I know where it all is. I think everything should have a place, uh, a little bit of OCD I think there, but everything should have a place, a home. And then obviously you can, you can get at it straight away should you need it. But um, yeah, I mentioned uh, a second ago about the, the water system, something that, that uh, we fitted. I didn't really uh, feel the need for it until I saw one on, a, on another Land Rover. I should just show you that now. Basically, what you've got underneath here, um, this system here is a tap. Um, there's no water in it at the moment, obviously I don't store water in there. But this is a tap system here, and what that does is there's a 20 mil pipe that comes up into the above the wheel arch there, along the internal trunk tray of the Defender, and in front of all this here, there is a, a hard plastic moulded um, water holder. Uh, that holds 70 litres of water, uh, obviously, and it's fed by gravity all the way down to a tap here. And I mean, that's uh, if I just show you for a second, uh, for instance, the kettle out of there, I've set the cooker up, literally. There you go, on there, fill, fill the kettle, um, away to go. From there, washing your hands or anything else, kettle's boiling away, you've still got full access to the Land Rover, um, absolutely superb. So yeah, um, a few other things that I'll just briefly show you while I've got it opened up here. Need to give that a little clean. Um, in the drawer itself, uh, I've got various bits and pieces, including saws, emergency saws, um, I do swear by the Laplander, but I've always got spares, different types. Um, I do have, uh, I do have good old faithful cups. It's nice to drink out of the old flask mugs, but uh, give them a quick swill, and there's nothing better in the field having a nice uh, cup of tea from a china cup. Um, various other bits and pieces. Uh, I've got a bushcraft in here. I've got a, a quick uh, bushcrafts kit. This this usually goes with me in the. Um, in the rucksack to be honest um, but I had it out only recently uh, checking bits and pieces let's have a look so inside this uh, in this side this kit here we've got this open it up um, paracord for bow drill um, fire by friction got a bearing block I mean let's go from uh, right to left on this one you've got two sets of paracord there about 10 meters 
always keep that. I don't think you can ever have enough paracord, as we all know. Um, I've got a, a rod there that I've just uh, robbed from somewhere. Uh, basically, that goes with my homemade homemade drill for um, this time of the year, of course, for uh, uh, tapping birch bark. Uh, sorry, birch uh, birch sap. Um, it doesn't need to go any deeper than that. In fact, it probably only goes to a sort of depth of that, and then it, and then it use, you know it works very very well. But um, so so I made that myself, nice and easy, job done. Most important thing, if you guys ever do it, obviously, is plug the tree correctly. Nothing worse than leaving it seeping. It's um, yeah, it's it's not a not a good thing to do. But uh, yeah, so um, that's homemade kit. Various other bits and pieces from uh, uh, what's that? This, uh, carving hook knives and bits and pieces um, I've then got I started off making out here's a bearing block there and a drill not been used yet but I'll probably wear that one in um, but yeah so that's a little bit of bushcraft gear that I've got kicking about in here it'll probably go back in my rucksack to be honest but um, yeah so that's uh, that's that what I'll do in a second um, I'll uh, I'll take the camera and I'll show you guys uh, sort of the front and the cab of the Land Rover so um, yeah. Okay, I'll just show you the front. Hi right, guys, uh, just showing you the front of the um, Land Rover now. I've packed uh, the rear end of the Land Rover all away, as I just um, just did. I uh, just wanted to show you the front, and I'll probably show you the top as well, um, some of the storage. Like I said, I'm going to get another video together, um, much more in depth. Uh, if you guys can leave some comments and, and come back to me with your thoughts. But I, I can do a video a much more in depth of the full setup, you know, the Hannibal roof tent, how it goes up, the sort of speeds, that sort of thing, and the room it gives, and, and basically a good flavour and look at this, uh, the kit once it's set up. So I can do that in another video. But um, while I'm here, I thought I'd uh, just show you. I've got obviously the winch on the front. Again, all the kit that this Land Rover had, I, I fitted totally myself. Um, I've got the winch on the front here. It is a super winch. Uh, it's, again, it's never let me down. This is a lot of people say worn super witch, which one? I mean, they're both on the ATV, the quad bike. I have um, a worn winch. This one is super winch, never let me down. Done a lot of work. There's other videos of me winching this vehicle and other vehicles out, um, so it works tremendously well. It's got the um, the rope rather than the steel cable. Um, it's got the platinum rope or whatever they call it. I'm not quite sure on that one. But uh, it's a lot better than steel cable. You don't get the splintering, um, and it's again not let me down. It's great, great stuff. Uh, on the front of the Land Rover, you probably see that this bit of kit here. This is um, from a chap that's actually in the UK. He's very, um, very worldly. This guy, Alex, uh, globaroma.uk.co.uk. He makes bits and pieces of bonnet buddy and, and this for the Land Rover. Again, it's tried and tested. I do a lot of off-road with uh, this chap, Alex. And this was designed, obviously, for the cold weather and when you're wading. When you're wading, you can lift up this, obviously, slide this down, and then zip down the two um, to, to give you, you know, cover um, for when you're wading. So you're not getting, especially with this vehicle, this vehicle's got... Um, uh, air conditioning so you just basically let it let a bit there as you can see pull that down and then zip yeah and zip They're a bit stiff but yeah zip and zip and it gives you um gives you total cover i've had this set to pretty, pretty much uh, 30 percent down because we've had a you know a couple of cold snaps but um yeah again great bit of kit fits lovely dead easy to fit front grill off this is the air conditioned model front grill off this basically fits around the front of it um, and goes together, you know, dead easy, dead easy. And a lovely bit of kit, very well made, I have to say, very well made. Um, obviously, we've got the checker plate, as you can see, you guys can see, on the front of the Land Rover and light guards. Um, they've saved the lights on no end of occasions, really. Um, you've got the checker plate, in all fitted myself, pop riveted. Um, a lot of people have it fitted for aesthetics and looks. As you can see, there's muddy footprints. I've been up there today, so uh, this kit is, is, is invaluable to me because I'm up there all the time. Um, these two bits of kit here, I don't know if uh, many of you guys are familiar with these. These are called brush wires. Now, this is a stainless steel wire, um, and I've got it fitted. A lot of people tend to think that it's there to hold the roof rack on or, or something. It's actually there to deflect any trees or branches away from the... Uh, the, the screen, the windscreen, uh, and it works very, very well. 
as you're um, as you're off-roading or you're coming into an area where there's trees, the light guards protect the lights, obviously, and then the branches hit this and they tend to fold away from the uh, from the windscreen, which uh, great again, uh, peace of mind really. It's always that one branch that you don't see that smashes the window and it's game over, you know. But um, okay, look, looking at the top then, looking at the top. You, I don't know if you guys can see there, but. We've got uh, wolf boxes up there, Hannibal, the same kit, um, pretty faded, but it's the same kit as the roof tent, and there's two wolf boxes in there. Basically, what I do with those is if we're going on a, a, a week's, uh, you know, a week out somewhere down to South Wales or West Wales or yeah, abroad, we'll put clothing uh, in those because they're accessed from the tent up above. So basically all you do, unzip it, grab the wolf box, straight in the tent, sort out whatever clothes you've got, straight back out and zipped up job done it's all waterproof um again great bit of kit and you've got to use every single piece of space that you have especially on a 90 land rover defender 90. 110s you've got a little bit more room to move so to speak uh but i wanted a 90 for its off-road capability really but um and then if you see on the right hand side at the top of the um the top of the rack there i've got a uh, holder that's um a full set again hannibal off-road gear uh, aluminium clamped and locked uh, in the left hand one there I've got fuel um, and in the right hand one we have water the nice thing about the ex army water holder there when we went to the Alps and when we've done a couple of uh, off-roading trips abroad um, Morocco and the like these heat up during the day anyway and, and the water is actually lukewarm out of that so uh, I come out of that into a solar shower and uh, away to go. It's absolutely fantastic. But um, yeah, so that's the, uh, that, that's the front uh, and, and sort of the roof, as I've said. You can see the roof lights on there. There's um, 400 watts there, that's 100 watts. So they're pretty, li pretty, you know, pretty good. They're driving lights. They're not, they're not in conjunction with these uh, headlights or side lights in any way. They're totally independent and switchable and they are driving lights. And the difference is immense. Um, but saying that, I've seen a couple of guys that have had these light bars fitted, the uh, LEDs, and I've got to say they're a really impressive bit of kit. But uh, I'll have to wait and see what Santa brings me at the end of the year, I think, for that. But uh, all right, I'll just show you guys uh, inside the cab, inside the unit where I've got other bits and pieces fitted. Um, uh, so yeah, I'll, okay, I'll do I'm that. Okay, I'm open the, uh, the driver's door here. Um, okay. Uh, this is the XS model. I'm really proud of this one. This is the XS model of the Defender. Uh, it's the TD5, so it's the it's the um, the five cylinder. But uh, yeah, it's the XS, so it's got electric. It's a bit cheating, really, for a Defender. It's got electric windows. It's got heated seats, um, heated front and rear screen, air conditioning system. So I mean, it is it's quite a pleasure to drive in any off-road situation. I, I've got to say. But uh, inside the cab, then basically. We've got the normal facilities that any Land Rover has, of course, but there's a few sort of added's that we've put in there, add-ons, so to speak. Um, we've got a CD player, which has got uh, it's got Bluetooth, but it's got an umbilical cord as well to the iPod, uh, to a docking station in there. I've got the CB system that's set up, and I'm soon to be fitting a uh, VHF UHF radio system. Um, so that's going to be going all together in there. Uh, inside the cab itself, there's a few little items, a few little items that I've added. Uh, I've got an emergency smash uh, hammer for obviously getting out. It's got a dog guard in the back there, which is a cage, uh, which I've, I've cut out a square so we can access the fridge um, from the uh, compartment here. I'll tell you what I'll do, guys. I'll, uh, I'll grab the, the camera and I'll, I'll just show you so you can see what I'm, what I'm talking about. Okay then, let's uh, let's have a look inside the the Land Rover as I've said. Um, basically, you can see there. I don't know if you guys can see this. Uh, it's an old dog cage that I had. Um, it's uh, the dog guard, should I say? And in the 90s, the Land Rover 90s, it's a sort of demarcation line for the dogs. So I thought I'd leave that up there for safety because all this uh, off-road gear and expedition kit that I have in there, um, uh, in an emergency situation, you know, breaking or even uh, an accident, didn't want it all flying forward 
inside uh, to the compartment here, driver's compartment, and doing any damage. But also it allows me to clip up other kits and, and, and sort out other bits and pieces. You can see on the roof they've got emergency um, cutter, so that's emergency seat belt cutter and um, emergency smash glass hammer. I've got one in the front and there's one in the back as well. The one that was in the back is mainly because I used to have seats in there as uh, I'm sure you can understand. There's a first aid kit which is basically grabbable there from uh, front or back. You just reach around and grab it. Um, also you can see this item here um, that's flares. If you're in a situation you need to call help. Um, uh, there's some um, pop smoke flares there and a shamuli with an, um, uh, a parachute flare. So there, that's that's that one. Uh, fire extinguisher here, um, always checkable basically. I don't mean you guys can see inside the window there. Where are we there? Um, there's a gauge on it. Uh, I have that always facing the window so you can always check before we go anywhere. Uh, inside the cab itself, full toolkit. That's a brilliant toolkit. Um, table uh, for a bit of comfy. Pair of shades there, guys. Um, a throw line. Oh, I do a lot of work down on the River Y uh, and with the guys there. I know a lot of them. So, throw line's always um, handy. It's 15 metre, I think it's 8 mil that one. I'm not sure. Um, that's a good bit of kit. And this little bit of kit at the top there, that is, if I just, uh, let's see. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, there we go. That's the speaker for the CB system. Um, I'll, I'll bring the camera down here so you can see. Excuse the brush. <laughs> if you look down on there, there's a centre console. Um, I've got the CB system um, fitted in there, a little water bottle there. Um, cup holders. Down in the side there are various odds and sods and bits and pieces. Um, down at the front, I'm sure you guys have, have seen it, you're all into knives like me. Uh, I have an emergency knife there which is on the, the Bear grills. It's a Gurba knife, it's, it's good, uh, ignore the Bear grills bit if you will, um, but it, it's uh, it's just a good blade um, in an emergency. Good Gerber blade, serrated as well, so that's a, that's a good one. And in the front here, like I said, there's a docking station, there's the iPods. Um, there's a CD player, etc. And this is the air con system, as you can see all along here. Uh, so that's, that's a very, very good bit of kit, that. So, yeah, in a, in a nutshell, that's the driver's compartment. It is going to change somewhat um, later on in the year. I want a roof-mounted system in there. Maybe put the, um, the VHF radio um, kitted up in the roof here with a few switches, toggle switches for LEDs and, and other bits. But uh, until, that, until that time... Um, it's not going to change, but I mean it, it does exactly what it says on the tin for me uh, And it's a pleasure to drive as well. Let me just see right. Uh, let me just hold you Yeah, I don't know if you can see that guys, but um, uh, one thing that I wanted to show you here They've got a high lift jack. It's on uh, mountain points there Unfortunately here in the UK wherever you park I have to padlock it. It's a sad state of affairs I know but you have to padlock it um, So there's uh, yeah, there's the that, the old high lift jack. I've used it a couple of times. Fantastic, fantastic, really is. But uh, in a nutshell, there's the Land Rover guys. Um, I'll do a. I'll add on to this uh, this video. I'll probably show you the ATV. I'll get that out while it's um, sun shining, just to show you around that. Uh, and then obviously there's a bit of a kit list. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Well, uh, when I come back to you, okay. I'll add the ATV. Um, the ATV. Basically, the all-terrain vehicle, the ATV, the quad bike, an awful lot of people on YouTube use them. Uh, they're very, very popular. They're fantastic, really are. I've had quad bikes, ATVs, for over 20 years. Um, I've tried uh, everything from the Honda that you see here, uh, Kawasaki, Suzuki, Polaris. I've tried them all. Um, and I've got to say, the best, in my opinion, the best by far is the Honda. Um, absolutely, uh, it's an impeccable machine. I mean, the, the, the after sale service that you get and the reliability you get with a kit is fantastic. Basically, this machine, this machine is a five, I believe it's a five, six, seven cc, something along those lines. I'm not quite sure. Um, they call it the 600 or the 500 Foreman, sorry, they call it um, slightly over that. It's a four wheel drive, it's semi automatic. Um, like I say, Honda make a specific ATV engine. A lot of the other um, companies, Kawasaki, Suzuki and others, I'm not too sure right now, but they used to always adapt motorcycle engines um, to fit the ATV frame and obviously that, that sort of application. 
but Honda have made an engine uh, specifically designed for the ATV market, the Honda, you know, quads. And I think I'd be right in saying that the Foreman model is um, probably the best seller by far. I've had the, the Hondas that I've had over the years. I've had the 350 um, permanent four-wheel drive, uh, the big red. Um, I've had the 687, which was, was the largest. That's a 687cc uh, independent suspension, fuel injected. It was a monster, absolute monster. Um, but I've put it to work and it's more of a flying down the beach sort of uh, tool rather than actually a workhorse. But this bit of kit, uh, let's, let's just have a quick look at it. I've mentioned the winch. Um, this is a, a, a winch on the front here. It's a, a winch by Warren. Um, fantastic winch, never let me down. Um, let's have a look here. It's uh, controlled, controlled remotely by a remote that's in a, a system there. You basically plug it into the side and you've got a remote winch. Or indeed, you can sit on the ATV itself and you've got, you've got the full control uh, of the winch never let me down. I've used this winch, um, I would probably be right in saying 50, 60 times. Um, it's done all sorts of work and it's never let me down. Absolutely superb. It really is. Um, okay, it's got a full, when they come, when you buy the, the ATVs, they don't come with a road kit. I've got this road registered so it's fully insured and, and usable on the road. Here in the UK, um, you insure them as an agricultural vehicle. Um, you don't, by law, I believe, I'll have to check on this, uh, you don't need a, to wear a helmet, although I do. Uh, every time, a very good friend of mine nearly lost his life on a, on a quad bike accident. Total freak accident, and that's that's the wake up call that I think a lot of people needed. But uh, yeah, so uh, it's, 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 a, it's a great bit of kit, it's four wheel drive. Um, selectable two-wheel and four-wheel drive. I'll grab the camera and give you guys a bit of a walk around, probably better, um, so you'll get a, a bit, bit, bit better of a sort of feel for it. Okay, Bear with me a second. Look, then. Um, right, as I was saying, you've got the winch there on the front. Basically, if I walk along here, you'll see uh, the controls of the quad. Ignore this bit of block box system I'll talk about in a second, but basically what you've got here is the winch control. That's the indicator. So you've got the winch control there, ignition on. You've got common sense there. You've got in, you've got in and out. That's uh, not rocket science. Um, you've got all the controls. You've got your indicator switches and everything else. You've got your headlights, dip and main beam. Um, I had... Uh, I did this myself. The main light there, very good light, working light. When you have the road kit fitted with the main headlights, as you can see here and here, uh, they basically disconnect this one. However, I put a switch on it, an independent switch, so I can use it. It does make a difference when, you, when you're going around the fields um, late at night, checking on stock or any other bits and pieces, um, you know, or driving up through the woods. So let's have a walk around the, uh, the quad bike here. Um, a lot of you, like I say, use quad bikes. You can, that's what I'm talking about, selectable two-wheel and four-wheel drive. Let's have a look, see if I can get you and have a look at that. As you can see there, two-wheel, four-wheel drive is selectable. Going along, literally, into four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, that's the throttle there. Um, it's as easy as that, and, and I would, I'm not going to say they're easy to ride. Uh, they're easy to move. You, you know, that's, I will say, easy to move. But um, riding them and safely, uh, like I say, I've had them 20 years. I've had a couple of close calls, and people lose their lives every day on these kits. So you've got to give them the respect, I think, that's due. Um, coming down this side, then, uh, you've got a foot brake there. You've got a foot peg here, and you've got a, you've got a foot brake there, which is, again, good if you're doing any work with a winch and everything else. You can just lock your foot down on that. That's great. Uh, nice big seat. Um, walk around the back here. You've got uh, uh, your towing gear, just standard towing gear. Um, I tow uh, uh, down at the River Y when I'm launching boats in the summer, whether it's, uh, let me see if I can turn you around, whether it's the aluminium boat, as you can see there, or the Zodiac inflatable. Um, I use this, the ATV. It gets into places, put the four-way flashes on, launch it straight down the slipway into the river. Um, obviously, I've got the connectors here for the, for the indicators and everything for the trailer board on the trailer, and it works fine. Let's, um, let's walk around this side. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, basically, uh, on this side, you've got the gear selection. So I'll just bring you down here and have a look. This is a gear selector. You've got, um, you've got one down and, I think, five up. So you've got five forward gears up, semi-automatic, up, up, up with your feet, you know, with your foot, left foot, and, uh, and then lock it off and, and put down, and it will click into reverse. The R will light up on the dash, etc. Um, 
and away to go. So it's four wheel drive as well in reverse. Um, you've got the fuel cut off uh, there. Um, auxiliary power here. I use this, I used to use this for lamping. Uh, if I was out shooting, um, controlling vermin and stuff like that, then I'd go out, um, plug the lamp into there, a bit lazy, but uh, did the job fine. Um, yeah, just had new tyres put on it. So um, that's the ATV. Now a lot of you guys will see that this ATV um, in videos. Let me turn you around there. Yeah, you guys will see that ATV in Wiltshire Man, in Sandy's videos. Um, and I'll say no more on it, but um, uh, see the comments that, that uh, Sandy leaves. Um, fantastic. I mean, you can go over wet ground with these things and you leave more of an impression with your foot than you will with this bit of kit. So you drive over this with all your kit um, and you'll leave more of damage to the ground, to wet ground with your feet than you will this. That's how low ground pressure they are. And I mean, let me just turn you around and show you these tires. Um, these tires here, front and rear, I think I run them on four pound. I think, uh, no, that's uh, they're a bit more actually, that's a lie at the moment. I think there's about seven pound in them. But when, when I'm uh, doing any uh, serious work, there's four pound. Um, fantastic, they really will pull. Uh, like I say, not let me down. I'm one of the sort of people that, uh, if you can, buy good gear and it'll always last you and never let you down. So, uh, there's that bit of kit. Okay, guys, um, I'm not going to carry on and on and on about kit. Um, I've done, uh, somebody suggested that I do a bit of a, uh, a kit um, rundown on, on this. Obviously, I'm going to go into depth. In other videos, I'll do um, videos stripping them all down and showing you. Uh, and you'll see other videos with me using the kit out in the field, you know, um, different applications, whether it's the, the Defender, the Land Rover, or the quad bike. Um, I'm going to be launching the Zodiac Inflatable in the coming days, especially if the weather stays like this. Um, so I'm going to be launching the boat, and I, again, I'll be using the ATV. So, so you'll you'll get a you'll get a bit of sight of that. But um, right, well, thanks for joining me, guys. I hope I've not bored you and gone on and on about some of the kit. Uh, I'll be doing another video later on with um, knives. I teach bushcraft and survival um, here, and uh, I have knives for each application. Uh, so I'll be doing a little video later on um, for, from home uh, with knives and, and uh, prang and, uh, and that sort of thing. But uh, Thanks again, guys, for, for, for um, following me around and, and looking at the kit. Like I say, I, I hope I've not bored you. But if you'd be so kind, guys, to leave your comments, I will have a look at them. And, and I am new to this, and I'll try and improve where I can. So thanks very much. Uh, you guys take care and enjoy the sunshine. Keep safe. Bye.